So for the last video here, I just want to show you how to take uh, a JSON string and uh, you know pretend that this is like a server response maybe, and um, take it and deserialize it into an object graph, and be able to take that and uh, you know build some content out of it. So I wrote a really simple example here, um, and based on you know just a simple example, you guys should be able to to take it and you know use that the same skill to to build something a lot more uh, complex and interesting hopefully. So uh, I didn't change anything um, really at all here. I still have the raw data being shown on the screen right from the razor view, right from the model. Um, all I've done is I've created this div for output. And basically I've said I'm going to put some stuff on the screen and whatever I put on the screen I'm going to target that div with jQuery and just put some content inside of it. So that's really simple. And then the only other thing I did is I invoked this function, this JavaScript function. So I've said um, I have a function called process model which is scoped in an object called home and this actually here is doing uh, is doing uh, the de deserialization process so you know I kinda talked in the last video that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to to transfer information between uh, the razor views and the JavaScript functions but I found this is a pretty clean way uh, if you have you know some raw Java or JSON text and you want to kind of pass it, pass that information to uh, a JavaScript method. Uh, so you can just do HTML.raw and then pass it the string. So this here is just the plain string, model.rawData. And HTML.raw, uh, passing it to HTML.raw and passing that as the parameter to, to any JavaScript function, in this case process model, will literally deserialize it into an object graph and that's what you're going to get in your function. <clears throat> so if you look at my function, process model, this one parameter that it gets is really the, the big object graph that got deserialized from the raw JSON string. So that's really cool. Um, it makes it really easy. You can see I didn't write very much code here at all. And you know this is um, this is some just pretty standard uh, JavaScript code here. I have a for loop that I'm saying um, I know that the model has people in it. So for each person, I want to declare a variable to represent that person. So the the people array, I'm indexing it with the i variable. So here I'm doing a little jQuery. So I say grab my output div, this guy right here. So when you use the pound, remember it grabs it by ID. So I say grab that. And this is kind of the standard way of, of appending content in jQuery. You just say, you know, append the div. And then I'm going to give it the text value of the person's name. And the reason this works, person.name, is because, you know, just like we saw from the, you know, the object graph, all that, um, the raw text from the JSON is being reconstructed or deserialized back into an object graph on the client side that mirrors the model on the server side. So remember back here, we saw that a person has a name and an age and children. In that same way, just taking the string and deserializing it gives us, you know, a person that has a name and an age and children. And I'm just giving it this class so it looks nice. So now that I've I've taken care of their name and their age, I say I want to also print out their children. So for every person, I'm iterating through all of their children, plucking the child out of the array, and I'm also writing the child name and age to the screen. So. Um, I have two dimensions of data, people and their children, so this is you know a two di a two dimensional loop. Uh, I'm looping through it twice. So, um, well, the, the i for loop is looping through the people, and for every person, I'm looping through all their children with the j loop. So this is really just showing you that you know w uh, this code is entirely using an object graph, and you know I'll, I'll debug through it to show you the contents of the object. And the point of this is to show you that this all came from raw text. So here we show the raw text on the screen, and here we show how we're just passing that same exact string to a JavaScript method. So when you run the whole thing, we see the, the raw data. This is the raw data. And then we see what my code did. And my code was just working with an object graph. So I went from raw JSON data to being able to write some really clean code that produces content based on very structured 
data in an object graph. You can't be working with this, you know, data. You can't be working with data like this and parsing strings. It's just, it's just not the way you do it. Um, this is the form that is used when it gets sent back and forth between the client and the server. But the object graph is what we use when we're actually creating content and performing behavior on uh, our data. So that's pretty much the entire lesson. Um, you know, obviously, I want you guys to do a little something a little more interesting than just printing out a couple of names. But you know, I think you get the idea. So um, let's actually debug this if we can, just just to watch it happening. If I can, let's see sources scripts. Why is it all over there? There we go. Like that, dock it. And I'm going to put a breakpoint. Let's see, where do I want my breakpoint? How about. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'll just put it right there. Refresh the page. So all I really want to do is hover over model. And you can see the model is has an array of two people. This is the first person. Marcia Santos, age 67. She has children, which is an array of three people. That has three objects in it. My sister, me, and my brother. And the same thing with my aunt and her three children. So this is, you know, this this is what the you know when I when I say the object graph, this is what I'm talking about. This big object graph was, you know, deserialized means when we say serialized, we say take an object graph and turn it into some primitive form of information like bytes or a string. When we say deserialize, we mean take that raw data or string or bytes and recreate the object graph. So that transformation has taken place, um, and you, we can see the object graph right here as uh, as a result. So um, you know your assignment is going to be be able to do the same thing. Uh, just you know basically write yourself. A, uh, a big node of JSON, which is your input data, and then deserialize that into uh, an object graph that gets passed to a function in JavaScript. And then from there, you can just go crazy creating content and behavior and any kind of nice website you want. So that's pretty much it. This is a kind of a more of a preparatory week because this, you know, the JSON skill is really kind of more like a prerequisite for understanding how to do asynchronous communication between uh, the client and the server. Um, since it's the language of communication, it's kind of, you know, we, you know, you really want to get to to learn this well just so you can uh, not have any problems when we start. Um, you know, sending requests and responses back and forth and, and dealing with success scenarios and error scenarios. Everything that we're going to be doing is, you know, handling JSON. And a lot of times when you have problems, you know, a service doesn't work or you get a failure, you have to do a lot of analysis of this kind of really nasty string. You know, you, you look in here and you say, hey, what's wrong with my input or what's wrong with my request? And, you know, a lot of times not being able to read JSON is, you know, can make or break you. That can be the difference between, you know, being good at debugging web services, being able to, um, you know, figure out why your your JavaScript isn't working. So you've got to understand JSON. You've got to be able to look at it and read it really fast and understand it really fast. So, um, you know, try to study hard and, you know, practice it because it's a, it's a pretty important skill, I'm not going to lie. So that pretty much does it for this week. And next week we'll be doing um, uh, some, you know, things with a little more behavior oriented, uh, a little more pragmatic as far as like doing a lot of things instead of just kind of focusing on one uh, kind of more, uh, you know, semantic aspect of technology. So we'll, we're going to be doing a lot more uh, application instead of kind of analysis of just uh, a language. So, you know, in the meantime, study this pretty, pretty well and practice it as much as you can because, like I said, you're going to need pretty good mastery of being able to read and um, point out flaws in JSON and be able to work with it uh, once you put it into object form. And uh, that's pretty much going to be all you need to do.